It takes a special breed to be a truck driving man and a steady hand to pull that load behind. sent me so that's kind of cool ain't it Okay, now I got some puller holes there. Up. Okay, that's what it looks like. So you just got out. I just smacked it with the plastic hammer and it came loose. Not much of a rotor. There's two different housings for these. There's one for retarder and one for non-retarder. And so even if you put the one on for a non-retarder, uh, you couldn't put the brake saver on back here like they do on the C-15. Just not set up for it. Not set up for it. Okay, and I gotta take off all these timing gears. So I think I shall start with the big one. That shaft feels pretty war. I think good. Right in there. Come on. I can feel wear in that one too, pretty good. On the thrust side, pretty good wear. I'm gonna have to say a lot of these components are gut shot, or out. Okay, I'm taking out all these studs out of this back plate. Mostly because you can't clean up this gasket without doing that. Um, they just screw in there, tighten them up, 3 8 stud, it must be a taper lock stud. But not any, they didn't, they didn't leak at all, I mean this one's rusty so the gasket was sealing good. All this red stuff you see on there is cats. They called it liquid gasket something, 7 Mary, I can't remember what it was. Huh. Hello. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. 
Good thing I answered that one. It was the Home Depot. They're coming tomorrow. Well, that sucker got water in it from the outside, rusted the tar out of it. That's crazy. Oil couldn't get out anywhere, but the water seemed to be able to get in. Go figure. Better take a picture of this so I can remember where all these studs went so I don't have to fight and figure it out. Voila! Jeff wins. chair here. There, I can sit and watch you tell you what to do and then I can just roll over here like a jazzy. There, tip back. That. Ready? There you go. Saturday, the 25th. That was a little wore out of it sitting for a little while. <laughs> well, aren't the bottom cylinders on those always clear full of oil? Oh, yeah. yeah. That one sounds good. I was reading to the comments, some guy it sounded like he knew it. Well, not that particular engine said they were kind of notorious. It took a good couple minutes to get it warmed up and they just ran like shit. Okay, Jerry, can you take that little knife and cut those buggers? She's pretty. That'd be easier to stick your hand through here, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, I guess maybe now that I got. No? Can't wait? <laughs> Bam! <laughs> yeah. Got them all? Yep. It's almost got the oil out of it. Tell them to check the gas and fill the oil. Bring a bar of soap. <laughs> so I'm still having trouble getting that over. It's like. One of the crank throws or something in the way, or... Well... I need a thinner plate. There. there. That help? Yep. That we're in now. Thanks for the nice knife, Dennis. We found a good use for it already. Miniature one worked good for this. 
You get them all? Check this out. That's how deep that pit was in there. Almost ready to go all the way through. Check this out. I don't, I've never seen one this bad ever. Looky here, Dean. No rednecks here today. Genuine cat, part number 439-3939. Working load limit, 9,000 pounds. I think we're good there. <laughs> So what am I doing? I'm going to tip this on its side or clear up on its top, get the crank out. This should work. If not, it's going to go kabang. There we go. Now, come on. Uh, the hoist got to go. Down here. There we go. Over center. How'd I do? How'd I do? Okay, kids, I got the storybook out. Let me read you some stories. So, 1693 rod from uh, center to center is 11.125. A 3406 rod is 10.300 center to center. Uh, maximum crankshaft in play for crankshaft new, six thousandths to eighteen were nine, so we're good there. Maximum permissible in play for the crankshaft, thirty-five thousandths. So the rod bearings are three point five three nine seven, basically uh, three point five four in uh, diameter. The width of them is 2.164. Um, in metric, that's going to be 89.908 diameter. And your width is going to be 54.97 in millimeters. The diameter of the main journals is uh, basically 4.5, 4.5 inches, which is 114.292 millimeters. And then the width of the main bearings is 1.930 for 49.02 millimeters uh, but the width of the rear journal with the mate with the thrust bearing on it is 2.100 or 53.34 millimeters so I do not know what the specs on a 3406 rod bearing main bearing are so if you know you know what to do put them below you know, come to think of it, while we're here, I think I'm going to take a cap off, put some plastic gauge if I can find some under there, and see what we have right now. That would be interesting. <whistles> see that? This is what you call a shop tourniquet. <laughs> How many of you do this? Band-Aid. Electric tape. I don't know what that is. I need bigger plastic gauge. I'm gonna call Jake, see if he'll pick me some up. Okay, my uh, rod journals are supposed to measure 3.5397, and I'm right at uh, 539. So, rods are good, the crankshaft journals are good but man you know none of the bearings look good i'm still going to put plastic gauge i this is a zero to four mike i need a 
four and a half to do the mains and I don't have one so I'm gonna have to use some plastic gauge I got some blue plastic gauge and put on there um, anyway using their little paper measuring deal that looks like about nine thousandths clearance in there okay I'm gonna take the crank out The bearings are just wore really bad, the crankshaft isn't. Um, crankshaft's in good shape. So I don't know what to make of it. Hey everybody, uh, gonna keep on posting videos on the progress of the 1693. I still haven't made up my mind yet, really, whether or not I'm going to go get another block. Uh, I'm going to clean this one up first and see just how bad it is, and then I'll make that decision. But uh, Senseless Fabrication made this comment. He said, the motor rebuilding is going to be fun for us. Uh, we aren't paying for the parts. Well, now hold on here, Senseless Fabrication. In a way, you are. And you can really help me out on this by liking and subscribing. Uh, like 80% of my views come from those of you who aren't subscribed. So if you like the content that I'm putting out, please subscribe because it really, really helps. Uh, also, if you remember the white box, remember the white box I had with all the cool things inside? Uh, that really helps too. <laughs> But uh, like it, subscribe it, make a comment. Those all drive how much YouTube recommends it to people. Uh, the more views I get, uh, the faster this is going to go because uh, the more money I make. So that's how you can help in this is like and subscribe, uh, make comments, and uh, share the video with somebody who you think might be interested in this rebuild. So. I appreciate your support, and uh, away we go. Oh, P.S. Uh, really love the positive comments from those of you who've worked on engines and stuff. Uh, I love any information that I can get my hands on. So if you see something that maybe I need to look at or address, make a comment, because that helps, remember? <laughs> hey, look, I found that white box. Remember the white box? Huh, got some pretty nice looking white box. I wonder if there's anything in there. Hmm, don't really see anything. Do you see anything in there? Yeah, I don't know. What's on, what else is on here? Oh, okay, well, I don't know, it's a cool white box.